Hi, I'm Avery. I am Lily. And you can't even make a car without turtles in it. Welcome That's to From the Closet. To go for. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Welcome to From the Closet. Today we are covering Infinity Train Season 1. Um, and you're coming to this like after we've already done uh, Gravity Falls and we was we split the uh, season into multiple parts. Uh, but we're not doing that here because the, uh, because honestly, Infinity Train, like, Infinity Train seasons are shorter than most movies. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Actually, um, season, uh, book five was supposed to be a movie. <laughs> yeah, that's the funny part about it. Um, except, he you know, it's never, yeah. well, except it's never going to happen. Yeah, except it's never going to happen. HBO, not Warner Brothers, that's who owns HBO. Suck my dick. Well, all right then. Um, no, I literally <laughs> got into this show. I made, like, I loved this show so much. And the final was canceled. Yeah. Interestingly, I have a friend who is probably going to watch this podcast um later uh and uh <laughs> they uh they're the one that actually got me into infinity train because um basically i have their hbo max account and um that's how i watched like the first two or three episodes initially uh because we watched them together and then um i went and watched the rest of season one and the rest of season two and then i just kind of started watching other stuff got busy, life. I didn't continue past season two. Um, season three is so good. I have heard Honestly. a lot of, uh, I have heard a lot of mixed things about season three. Um, from it what I understand, good, the people it is that... dark. Can you let me finish my thought? Uh, no. Um, from what I have heard, the people that really love season three really love season three and the people that really hate season three really hate season three. I don't know why anyone would hate season three. I've been told I'm going to know exactly why as soon as I see it. So. Oh, that's um, okay. If they hate season three, then they didn't go past the first five episodes. Actually, no first episode. They didn't even no, first like, no, I'm hearing like I'm hearing people saying this like in general, and these are people who watch the entire show. So, I mean, I understand you know people hating it from the first episode because well that was a very big surprise. Um, but, but anyway, like, we're not here to talk about season three. We need to save that for our season three episode. Um. I believe this episode that we're recording today is coming out in May, if I'm doing the math right. Well, May or June. Me. May or June, I can't remember. But, like, we're recording this in March. So, um... <laughs> I know... I know whenever we eventually get to Season 4, that's coming out in November. Um, if we did the math right. But, anyway... This show, uh, you can watch it on HBO Max. I don't know if I'll be able to provide a link for you to rent or purchase episodes, because I don't know if that's a thing with this show. It's happened a couple of times already, um, where we've recorded episodes, and I know... You didn't have me eh. check? Why would I have you check? I usually just check all that shit in post. It's usually you uh, bring it up. Anyway, yeah, um... Infinity Train Volume 1 is... Like, I didn't even bring it up with Turning Red, because, me. um... But, like, Turning Red is not available for purchase, or at the time that I uh, that I was uploading the podcast, it was not available for purchase. You could only watch it on Disney+. Plus. And, um... Unfortunately, that's just how things go with stuff like this, like... Camp Camp Season 3, I don't think that's available for purchase anywhere either. No, it is um, not. It is not. The Infinity the Train Infinity is. Train is. What the hell?
God, editing is e- editing. This is going to be a pain. For all record, that was your phone's fault. Anyway, you're going to have to actually remind me to listen to this one carefully and edit it mm-hmm. because uh, um, your I'll- audio. Your audio got mixed into it. Yeah, um, I might put a notice when I name the MP3 file. Yeah, okay, good. Because I will forget. Um, because we're probably not going to go an hour on this. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm probably not going to be able to provide purchase. If I am, cool. Um, oh, yeah, you will be. Um, Voodoo... Also- uh, Vandy Trained Voodoo is on there. Okay. All four seasons? I'll check again. I'm completely sure that there is. Okay. But, I mean, um, that's, it, it's not as relevant right now. Um, do you have the episode list pulled up? Oh, yeah, I had have, I have that episode list pulled up like before we started filming. Okay. Let's go with episode one. Uh, let's let us let us get the ball rolling. Well, obviously, you know the grid car. Yeah, you um, know, get everything, you know, set up to have. It. God, I just love this show, but yeah, this is where everything gets set up. Yeah, so like we start following this girl named Tulip. Um, she's eleven. She has interest in game design, and her parents are divorced, and neither of them are particularly. Like, they're not very good at uh, handling being divorced yet. They don't really know what they're doing and everything. And naturally, Tulip is very angry about it. And, like, the way they portray it is, like, pretty well done, I would say. Um, yeah. Um, because actually when I was searching up um, information about this show, you know, you see a lot of shows that just do divorce as... Oh, you got um, the kid or whatever has to bring them back together, which is not really realistic. Because obviously, if they're not meant to be together and it it only brings them more pain, then they shouldn't. Yeah, and there's a movie or actually two movies with the same name that we're going to eventually cover that I think are uh, like, if it wasn't just for that one aspect alone, these two movies would be absolutely almost perfect. Like, or at the very least the second one. Um, Hmm. I haven't seen the first one in ages, so I, am not sure if I can say that about the first one. Um, And, um, yeah, we're definitely going to get to that. Thankfully, they didn't really go for that here. Although the the ending is kind of weird uh, to this season because, like, it's not really clear how much time has passed. And it almost feels like um, some of time was rewound or they jumped ahead a year. I they can't... jumped ahead because... Um, I believe the camp was an annual thing. So, um, the natural course of reaction would be at the end of the series, Tulip just went next year. And supposedly the whole concept of the Infinity Train is, like, based on the fact that, like, thousands of kids go missing every single year. I was talking with a friend of mine about how um, it would be interesting to see, like, how the government uh, feels about the Infinity Train. And, well, it's not just kids. That's true, because you have characters like Amelia, mm-hmm. um, who but- I was very disappointed wasn't the main protagonist of season two. Um, oh, yeah. That was supposed to be the main... Amelia was supposed to be the main protagonist of season five, or book five, because that's supposed to be a movie. Yeah, that, that that really irks me. 
It hurts you. It hurts me. I seen season three. Okay. Big deal. You want a cookie? No, I want two. And, um, so a cu- there, there's a couple of things I want to mention, like, while we're going through this. Like, mm-hmm. uh, one one reminds me of Guru Guru from Dragon Ball GT, Ooh. um, which is kind of a weird reference because not a lot of people mention Dragon Ball GT. Um, <laughs> people prefer to forget that that existed. I think it was great, but whatever. Uh, Did he ever find his mother? I mean, yes. <laughs> I also think that might be a reference to the Dr. Seuss book. Um, I, I want to say the book is called Are You My Mother, but I'm not sure. Um, and then Randall, that weird water creature, reminds uh, me of Quags. The crack. Uh, Randall? He reminds me of uh, Quagsire. Huh. Um... Throughout the series, you'll find Randall is, um, can take any form he wants because he is liquid. In fact, I think he's literally all of water in Infinity Train. He, I mean, he even has that zigzag line going down his back like Quagsire does. Um, I think that's just ripples, but okay. No, it's like a very clear line. It's not, it, it's not ripples. It does not look like ripples at all. Um, Besides, ripples are, like, circular or elliptical. Um, mm, elliptical. But, anyway. Yeah, uh, the cat... I have a feeling that the cat reminds me of a cat from something else, but I can't really place what it is. The cat, and since you actually watched season two, I'll just fill in the gaps. Uh, the cat will appear in every season. The cat is okay. a reoccurring character among uh, tying the seasons together. Yeah, and then, um, okay, so season, uh, okay, episode one, uh, we, like, we, we basically we're just going through all of these, um, like, w- throughout the entire season, we're just following Tulip as she goes through all of these cars she has like a number on her hand mm-hmm. and she doesn't understand what the number is at first, but it kind of feels like the number just like represents the amount of emotional problems you have. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, as she learns lessons going through each of these cars, that number goes down when it eventually reaches zero, she's able to like a, a portal opens and she's able to escape the train. Um, What's interesting is we actually see some other kids escape the train at the very start, but we don't know that that's what they were doing. Um, But so basically, and keep saying kids, um, the family train picks up literally anyone who has emotional problems. It basically um, the community loves calling this um, just free therapy. I mean, okay. The thing is, like, I, I keep saying kids because Tulip was a kid, the protagonist of season two was a kid, and from what I understand, the protagonists of season three are a group of kids that the protagonist of season two ran into during mm-hmm. their their whole adventure. So, no, like, actually, I, in season two, you've seen, um, like, this elderly woman that kind of looks like a cook. But, yeah, uh... But yeah, this Any- is um, the free therapy ride. Which yeah, is, the free uh, therapy ride where you can also just die. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway. But yeah, a um, lot of interesting stuff. Some characters are definitely coming back later. I don't know if I expect to see Atticus again. Um, um, I wouldn't expect that. Um, I know for sure that Mirror Tulip comes back. Um, as well because, as 1-1. One, one. Well, yeah, 1-1's one, the the conductor. Spoilers. Um, I, th- I think I have to remind another group of people. But, yeah. Uh, uh, you, you've already told me the cat comes back. Um, wonder oh. if that... 
I wonder if that girl that was like, or was it a girl or whatever, the character that had a rose for a head. I wonder if that character comes back. I don't think so. But <laughs> yeah, someone it's that like will come back. And this show loves its mysteries and only lets you know things as long as it creates more questions for you. And it loves it, its callbacks or more call forwards. Is that even a thing? Foreshadowing? Is yeah, that foreshadowing. the word you're looking for? So, <laughs> in the, um, the conductor's car, you can actually see a bunch of faces and, you know, with their numbers. And you don't know it yet. And I'm not, not going to say their names, but you do see Grace and Simon. Yeah, and then, um, okay, so the first episode, I'm, I'm trying to remember roughly what the plot of that episode was, like, after she got on board the train. Oh, yeah. Because, so like, it, is she it in this episode, hmm? like, is it in this episode that she meets Randall and 1-1 and the cat? No, no. This ep well, she meets 1-1. Okay. So, obviously, she goes through, because she thinks that... She um, hallucinated about outdated forms of transport. Yeah, she is in the same um, environment she was back when she got on the train. And then she finds one one. Then she finds the door. And um, the next train car was the one about, you know, the block building one. Yeah, that one that one looked interesting because you could kind of just build whatever the hell you wanted. Um, and then, um, well, she saw someone get disintegrated, decided to leave, and then decided leaving was probably not the best option. Yeah, because the outside looked like where the hell are they? Because that like the outside of where the train is just it looks to me like. Some of the description of weird alien worlds and shit that I've seen in Creepypasta. Yeah. Hell, the, cre the creature that uh, was chasing her and the creature that Atticus turned into looked like stuff out of Creepypasta. Oh, something else the show did really well. It didn't force a happy ending on each episode. I mean, yeah, because this speaking <laughs> about uh, episode eight. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what that is, but um, yeah, well, I know like, she just I know she just went through the uh, the block room and then eventually had to go back to it, but I can't remember why. Because obviously she's being chased by the thing you were describing. Oh, right, the thing that. Uh, yeah, the thing Whatever. that followed her to, onto the train, mm -hmm. the weird flying dog creature thingy. Exactly. I don't. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, um, and then I believe she makes it out of that, and then that's the end of the episode, right? Um. Yeah, she looks at the number, you know, painfully well. Like, what the fuck am I? And, um... The so, beach episode car. two... Yeah, so episode two is when she meets Randall and the cat, right? Yes. And there's that whole thing with, uh, a broken-off pipe being a donut holer and, uh, everything, and that's just, you know, a whole, its own thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, did... Uh, and the cat, ba basically the whole th thing with this episode is, like, the cat can take her to the conductor, but, like, the cat wants 1-1. One, one. Um, little do we know that 1-1 one, one is the conductor at this point. Um, and it's, uh, like, she kind of just hands over 1-1, one, one, and it's, like, it it's supposed to be, like, a growing experience for her or whatever, um, mm -hmm. and then, 
Yeah. Also, I just completely remembered something. Uh, what's that? So, remember in the first episode where she's eating an onion? Mm-hmm. Apparently, there's a bit of lore to that. So, when she was younger, she's like, oh, I want to try an onion. Her parents are like, yeah, sure, whatever. You're going to hate it. And then... But unable to admit defeat, she's like, yeah, I like this, and keep trying to, you know, eat it until she just eventually liked it. I don't think that's how liking things works. <laughs> but, she was okay. a kid. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can just turn into liking things after a spite. But, um, anyway, what is our next episode? Uh, I mean, everything moved in, like, a nice fashion. Yeah, the Corgi car. Okay, so, this one is our first time seeing that weird, um, the thing. Yeah, that thing. Um, there's a kind of a funny moment where they think it's the, a spider, um, before it, like, actually pops out and stuff. So that's its whole thing. But, yeah, basically Tulip's just trying to save um, this corgi town, village, whatever you want to call it. It's a kingdom, obviously. In a train car. Yep. Yep, That because this makes sense. Um, oh, and completely. <laughs> but, it makes uh, a little bit too much sense. Though, yeah, so essentially at the, the end, this is probably one of the cutest episodes. This is I mean, if you're, a, if you're a dog lover, sure. Um, I feel like anyone can get behind corgis. Not anyone. But um, I do okay. really appreciate how the dogs, like, how, okay, a lot of shows and movies and shit where they make, where they uh, give animals the ability to speak, tend to forget uh, the animal's nature entirely. And uh, I do. Uh, Disney. <laughs> I'm it's right. not just Disney. It's not just Disney. It's literally almost everyone. I mean, but it's not just Disney. But I'm right. Disney is also a big offender. <laughs> Everyone's a big offender. Um. It's just really nice that with this uh, with this show, Atticus is still very much a dog. Wanna go outside? Um, wanna go outside? Wanna go outside? Wanna go outside? <laughs> yeah, like, those were things, like, it actually made me laugh because it was the, the first time I've seen a situation where it, there's a talking animal that actually still acts like that animal. Aside from Up. Um, oh, yeah. Because Up, Up does that, too. Um, but I haven't seen Up in ages. Um, it is we'll on our wheel, actually. Yes, it is currently on our wheel, and maybe it'll get covered by the time this episode comes out. You never know. You never know. But, um, yeah, so that's really nice. Uh, and, uh, basically after this episode, Atticus comes with, uh, Tulip and one one. And um, our next episode is uh, what? Oh, this is the crystal car. Okay, this is the one where they just threw in a corn song for some reason. And of all corn songs, it was Word Up. It's just kind of funny to me. Um, also, Tulip is a terrible singer. Um, <laughs> but she doesn't have to be good. I mean, that's kind of the entire episode. Yeah, and the whole thing is like, oh, this door is locked, and also there's no stairs. Um, <laughs> and she has to touch this rock. She has to touch this rock and sing a song that's important to her. Um, and, and, you know, that's kind of what this episode was really focusing on. And it had to be in 
English uh, because a- Atticus couldn't do it. Um, and um, dial-up sounds also could not work. I love that it was fucking... It, I, I love that when 1-1 one, one touched it, it was the dial-up modem sounds. <laughs> like, that is just hilarious that that was in an actual show. Um, and, and of course, like this, this show aired on Cartoon Network, so a lot of the kids like wouldn't understand what the fuck that noise was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hell, I doubt Lily's even heard the noise like in real life. Okay, apart yeah, from... you got me. <laughs> yeah, I've searched up many times, but that's only two. Replace my knowledge of not hearing it in real life. And I know I've heard it like a couple of times, but I'm I'm not even like I've heard it a couple of times in real life, but um it was basically dead. Like dial up was basically dead by the time like I came along and was actually knowing what internet was. Um anyway, so here's the interesting episode, the cat car. The cat car. Yeah, the cat car. Uh, do I remember this one? <laughs> well, you should. <laughs> uh, is this the one where... Okay, no. See, for some reason, my brain was thinking there needed to be multiple cats, but is this the one with the videotape? Yeah. Okay, so... um, it The whole thing here is like Tulip goes into the this car and it's the car that belongs to the cat we met in like episode two or three or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um and she has a tape that has Tulip's name on it. She watches it and it traps her in like happy memories, but they're fake and it's um the whole thing is like you have to learn more about the tapes. In fact, each Season 2 and Season 3 furthers our knowledge of the tapes. Stop spoiling things! I only said, you know, well, gain, but right now, in Season 1, you'd only know that if you watch your own tape, you'll get trapped in it. But anyway, um, basically the whole thing to look has to learn here is like to remember things as they actually happened Mm -hmm. and not to like try to put a happy filter or even an overly dramatic filter over certain memories because there is that one um of her parents splitting up and it was like divorce divorce yeah and like basically in order to escape she had to um she had to try to remember the things as they actually happened. And that's really the gist of what this episode is. Um, I forget what happens after she escapes. So yeah, um, she escapes the tape, leaves the cat car, the cat grabs a very important tape, and then, well, gets rushed right back to the conductor, who was very... Not pleased that there was no one one in hand. Yeah, that's kind of uh, that's kind of a hint for later. Um, what's our next episode? Chrome car. Is this the one where Mirror Tulip is yep. introduced? Okay, cool. This episode um, really only serves the purpose of well, I guess you know. Tulip learns more about herself and learns to accept help, but also to set up next season. Yeah, like, this episode really, really sets up next season. Um, But I'm not going to talk about that yet. Um, I'm going to talk about that when we do season two. Um, But yeah, it was a whole interesting concept um, to have, like, mirrored versions of like, the characters, and it's also interesting to note that, like, even though, to like, after Tulip set uh, her reflection free, when she goes back to the real world, she doesn't have a reflection anymore. Um, and we actually see that. Yeah. Um, 
And I was joking with a friend of mine about that uh, yesterday. Um, and we were saying, like, she, it would be a cool parlor trick for her to, like, uh, on ha- like on Halloween one day to just dress up as a vampire and be like, hey, I can prove I'm a vampire. See, look, I don't have a reflection. My God. Um, I also think it would be really cool to see, like, um, I don't know, a spinoff series focusing on the protagonist from season two and, um, Tulip and Mirror Tulip. I'm not gonna spoil anything. Uh, that's as vague, that's about as, uh, mm-hmm. that is about as far as I'm going to talk about that. But I like but anyway, how Infinity Train just stopped after they were, you know, rescued and or escaped. I don't know how much I like the fact that each season is um like its own self-contained thing. Um like in one individual story arc. Um part of me likes it and then th- there's another part of me that wishes there were more shows like Avatar the Last Airbender where the entire show tells a whole story. Well, and like, you know where it's going to eventually lead to in like in the first season, but then mm-hmm. each season also contains its own sort of arc. If you get what I mean. Well, the entire stone of Benny train was at its very core understanding what the frick this infinity train is and you know the numbers on the hands and what the frick are they one of the world's a dog creature what does it do when it you know eats its prey i guess but yeah Absorb. um what is our next one um oh no the ball pit car episode oh. eight. Okay, so I don't really remember this episode that well. Um, I do remember that, like. So first uh, things off, uh, Tulip declares bankruptcy. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of funny. That like they were on a giant graph and everything. Well, that's what um, we should have done for the intro. Just. Welcome to, uh, you know, from the podcast, and I declare bankruptcy. Ah, uh, yes, from the podcast. That is the name of this show. <laughs> I was, I wasn't even <laughs> close. <laughs> but yeah, um, I do also remember, like, uh, uh, okay, actually, I think I kind of remember what this one is because there's not really, it doesn't really feel like there's a lesson being learned here. It just feels like, oh. They get into confrontation with the steward, and um, the uh, Atticus is turned into a uh, weird creature thing, and that's it. I want to say that's it. I mean, it leaves you with so many emotions because it goes... And how it goes by fast isn't one of its negatives. It it perfectly illustrates, you know, how something just something so good can go just by. I mean, it was interesting to see one of these um like high action sequences in a one of those uh playground sets like you would see at a fast food restaurant or something. Yeah. Um also, you could see the steward um, in, like, shadows uh, throughout, yeah. like, the first part of the episode. Did you ever play on those, like, playground sets and st- oh, stuff God, as a I kid? Did. Um, <laughs> especially McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I did as well. I didn't um, get, like, although, five different diseases. Yeah, I, I never really, you know, did ball pits that much, because... Uh, I don't think uh, my restaurant had a ball pit in. Yeah, the only ball pits I can remember uh, ever like being anywhere near were at Chuck E. Cheese. Um, I never liked Chuck E. Cheese's, honestly. 
I thought it was like fine. Um, but then again, like, um, eventually, um, I got to the point where, uh, I got to the point where whenever I would go to Chuck E. Cheese, I would literally just play that game where you, uh, throw the ball and it like try to get it into these, like you throw the ball across this little floor thing and there's a ramp at the end and you try to get it into these little holes. I forget what that's called. Oh yeah, um, I know which one you're talking about. The last time I went to an arcade, I actually failed. I got zero points. Wow, I was so rusty. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> um, I had it out for I, me. I, I wish swear. I, I wish I remember what that game was called. But like, it, it, if anyone Ski knows, ball. just to Ski Ball. That's it. Ski. Yeah. Eventually. Um, you know, as I started getting older, anytime I'd go to Chuck E. Cheese, I'd just, I'd just play skee-ball and eat pizza, and that would be it. <laughs> um, and I mean, skee-ball is still fun, but I wouldn't go to Chuck E. Cheese's to do it because it'd be kind I, I actually so many, think you're not... There's so many better um, arcades if you just want to play skee-ball. I also think adults aren't allowed in Chuck E. Cheese's if they're not accompanying a child. Um, I might feel like this is, um, that was a plot. Yeah, that was totally a plot to a regular show episode. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if we'll ever cover regular show. Um, I mean, it did have a plot. That's something. Did it? <laughs> well, when it got into the later seasons, it definitely got a more heavy plot than not the earlier seasons, so that's probably enough to justify not doing it. But yeah, um, I think Chuck E. Cheese also had... No, no, they didn't. They didn't have the, those, like, slide chains and, like, all that other stuff where you had to take your shoes off and, like, those weird hmm. stair things that you literally just pulled yourself up over. Um, okay. God. Which actually is funny, because we're retelling our past. It's the past car. The past car? The past car. I don't know what you're talking about here. <laughs> okay. You're so going to have to... At, at the beginning, I know you're going to remember this. So at the beginning of the episode, um, they can, you find the cat stuck under some rubble. And the cat uh, declares how... Um, to help Atticus, they needed to view the conductor's tape. And this, um, and this actually proves that you can view anyone's tape. You can't view, view your own without getting trapped. Yeah, and, um, you know, obviously the conductor, or the quotes conductor um has a very interesting story and in, like how she was married to this guy and then he died and everything and she kind of just spiraled out of control and um so took over the train out ousted one one from his position and everything there are some things i want to mention of that so from that one of the scenes you can see that you know um, I, f I knew his name it starts with an A, but, you know, his funeral was about to begin. She didn't go. And in psychology, and a lot of this does have a lot of psychology, like, psychology meanings. But in that, it's based, a uh, funeral is like saying goodbye. And, she never really got to say goodbye, and that just made her spiral more and more. And the reason yeah. why she was going to that college, she was going to jump off. Yeah, and then we eventually, um, she, um, like, the train appeared at the you know the last moment, and come on, use your words, obviously. <laughs> You know what happens after that, you know. She comes onto the train, talks to the conductor, overrides the conductor, and then tries to make her own 
train uh, carts, I her guess. Own, her own car to, like, basically replicate her... Old life. Like, ideal, happy life. Um, obviously, and the conductor says he's not going to do it, so she asks the conductor, tries to do it herself, and we see some of her attempts. Um, it always makes turtles. Yes, it, it, it always makes turtles, which is what I was referencing earlier at the beginning of the podcast when I said you, you can't even no make... idea. Yeah. Um, when I said you can't even make a car without turtles in it. Um, there was one interesting thing where that, like, there was a tree that had turtles instead of leaves. I don't know if you noticed that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's when she said about got turtles again. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of weird. Um, I will say, in Infinity Train, especially in Season 1, everything has a purpose. And yeah, it, I, I will say that... that you don't think will come back up again will come back up again in later seasons. But um, the thing that... But there is one problem that I have, hmm. and it's something that the cat says... Um, cause, okay. So the cat knows she's being forced to do things that she doesn't want to do. Like, it's very clear that she's being forced to do things she would otherwise not do. So why the fuck close to the end of the season does she say, I always do the right thing? Like, no, you've been doing the wrong thing for most of this season. Oh, she and you've says, been being um, forced to do it for oh, most she of says this some season. Great line. No, I'm not <laughs> gonna say I'm not gonna say it because it's such a great line and you need to experience it for yourself. But, but yeah, that I think that's the one issue, and then also like how unclear uh the uh whole time situation was uh like at the very end. No, I don't think it was unclear at all. I'm pretty sure they actually had um, a bit of text displaying on how much time has actually passed. I did not see a single bit of text. Um, Going back to... Um, one second. Mm -hmm. And, like, if it's supposed to be a year later, why does she look exactly the same? I Like, children do grow a lot within that time frame, like, from 11 to 12. Um, my god, I don't want to go to the, you know, season two, episode one. I want to go to the actual, you know, show in Fanny Train. Why does HBO Max suck? Sorry. I mean, it wasn't that hard for me. I just clicked on Infinity Train. It's literally in my list. Um, no, my issue is like, when I go to episodes that I've watched, it shows the episode and not the series. Okay. But, like, if it has text, I'm sure, like, I'm sure that makes yep, it more clear. I just later. didn't see. Okay, I just didn't see it. You didn't really need to go through all that trouble to just pull up the episode to watch well, it. Well, I knew it wasn't going to say, because this makes another thing clear. If it's seven months later... That means uh, four, five, yeah, five months passed while um, it's been five months while Tulip was on the train. Yeah, because, um, like, um, a friend of mine, uh, the, the friend that I've been talking about before, um, we were talking yesterday about how, like, obviously she had been missing for several months. Kind of weird that there's no mention of the fact that she was missing by either of her parents or anything. Just no mention of it after the, this seven-month gap or anything. Well, it, it has been seven months. That I mean, is yeah, but like also time. she. It, but then like also she's going to be going away again for uh, camp. It, it would have made sense to mention it. Um, mm -hmm. to be like, oh, it feels like we just got you back or something. And now you're going away. Like, a line like that would, like, go a long way. But, whatever. Um, 
But yeah, like that's generally just Infinity Train season one. Um, overall, pretty good. Um, I don't know. I feel like part of me wants more of uh, like wants more meat to the episodes and wants like ugh, it, it's kind of hard to voice what I'm feeling here. No, I feel like the episodes were just fine. In fact, the way that the episodes were structured to get to the like the simple point, and God, I just really love this show. But also, like in my head, I have the main theme stuck in my head. Okay, I think. Um... I think where it is for me is like a lot of the emotional depth is a little bit lost. Um, and I'm not sure if it's entirely due to like how short the episodes are, because I feel like I remember season two feeling like it had a lot more emotional depth than season one. Um, and like feeling like the character development felt more earned. Um, it actually had the exact same number of episodes in the exact same time. Yeah, but it the same. <laughs> it, that's not really um, what I'm saying here. It's more like they uh, just did flat out did it better in season two, yeah. whereas like in season one, it in, in season two it doesn't feel like they're being restricted by time, whereas it sort of does feel that way in season one to me. Um, but I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Um, so I'm going to look and see if Google brings up any ratings for this. It probably won't. And maybe I'm going to learn that TV shows don't get ratings like this or whatever. Probably um, not. Though, I mean, if anything, Camp Camp is probably not going to be, you know, rated as much as, you know... A okay, TV show so, on a streaming platform. So, um, it doesn't get ratings for individual series, uh, individual seasons, just the entire show. Um, and uh, also, Metacritic isn't listed, um, unlike how it is with movies. Um, actually, how's the entire show? I'm just curious. I actually think I'm going to talk about that in our season four episode. Hmm. I feel like it makes more sense to do that. So curious. Well, you can look it up later. Um, Fine. But to sort of wrap this up, do you want to give your rating for this season? I would love to, actually. And I didn't have pre like, I knew, like, where I wanted to go, and I definitely want to give this season really high. But then I thinking like, but I shouldn't do too high because I know I want to give the other seasons higher. So I'm going to give this 8.7. I am going to give this season um, a 7.3. Hmm. I feel like... Um, I just feel like the episodes felt a little, uh, I don't know. It's kind of hard to describe. It, it feels like there is so much that is just relying on later seasons, which isn't entirely a bad thing, but it feels like, you know, if this show had a more traditional structure to the way it was told and to the like length of the episodes and everything, um, we probably would have would know more and we'd be more attached to the characters um but i don't really feel that much of an attachment to tulip despite the fact that i should because i mean i definitely um, feel attachment to tulip also one one also i I would die for one one can i finish before i die for one one (laughs) um I really should feel a deeper connection with Tulip because like she's an 11 year old struggling with her parents' divorce who is really into game design and doesn't really know how to 
like let things out and like i was there um my parents divorced when i was 10 um and like i'm into game design and like everything it just i should feel more attachment to tulip but i don't for some reason one one is my I, spirit animal but there is another it, that's kind of uh not okay um it's kind of not very cool to like say things like that um hmm. like to say things are your spirit animal if you're not like um from a culture that actually has spirit am animals um animal um It, it, it's just something that, like, we should try not to really do. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, um, we will see. We will be seeing you in two months for uh, season two. Um, and yeah, until then, I've been Avery, and that has been Lily. And see ya.